In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can brand your BuddyBoss app using custom images, logos, and icons. First, let's see where these will display in the app. You can see I'm on my phone's home screen with the BuddyBoss app displaying here. It's using a custom icon right now, but you can change this icon to use your own branding when building your own app. There's a few different options depending on whether your members are using an Apple or Android device, which I'll explain in more detail later in this video. I'm about to open the app. The first thing you'll see is the launch screen. It will only appear for a second or two. That launch screen you just saw appears instantly while your app initializes. After the app initializes, the screen is immediately replaced with the login screen. We've designed the screen to be really inviting for your members. You can customize it with your own logo and background image. You can also customize the text, input, and button colors in the app settings, which we'll cover in more detail in our app colors video tutorial. Now let's go ahead and log in so we can see the app's home screen. The first tab in your tab bar will display as the home screen. When scrolling up on the home screen, the navigation bar will collapse and can optionally display a home screen logo. Next, let's jump into the WordPress admin to see how to add all these images into your BuddyBoss app. Here I am in the WordPress admin at BuddyBoss app branding images. And on the left, we can see six sections for uploading new branding images, three for screens and three for icons. And then this app preview on the right shows how these images will look in both iPhones and Android devices. Images uploaded into the home screen and login screen sections can be viewed in your app straight away after a hard quit. But for these other screens for launch screen, app icons, Android adaptive icon, and Android notification icon, all four of these require a new build before you can see the changes in your app. The reason for this is because these images need to be added directly into your app's files as they need to be available before your app is opened and fully loaded. I will show you in a separate tutorial how to request new app builds. Okay, let's start with the home screen logo. This will display in the navigation bar on whichever screen you have set as the first tab in your tab bar. Here we can see the image that's currently being used for the home screen logo. You can use either a square or wide image to fit in the space. I recommend adding transparency to the background layer of the image so that the color of the navigation bar will show through. For best results, upload a logo with a maximum dimension of 600 pixels wide by 90 pixels tall. And if we remove the image, you'll see that it gets replaced with text. So that means this image is optional. You could leave it as text if you prefer. So let's go ahead and upload a logo in here. First, I'll show you a square dimensioned image. It would look something like that. And then we could also go with a wider image like this one. And I'll crop it down and click finish. And there it is showing in our app preview and it's looking really good. Now let's update our login screen. The colors of the text and input fields and the button can all be changed from within this color section. Make sure to check out our upcoming app colors tutorial for full instructions on how to update all of the colors in your app. Let's start by updating our login logo. I'm gonna click here and I'll use the Buddy Boss logo and I can resize it. I'll click on finish and that looks great. Now let's go ahead and change the login background. You do not have to use a login background image. If you don't, then instead the login and sign up background color from the app's color setting is going to be used here. So if I remove this, you can see it's just applying a color. We have a template here to help you design your login screen background image. The reason we're using this template is because different phones have different screen sizes and in the future we'll be supporting tablets as well, and this one image needs to accommodate all those different dimensions. So you want your image to fill up this entire square so it can be used on a big device like a tablet. The most important thing to note is that any key elements of your image that you want to always show should sit within this safety zone. Keep in mind the safety zone is approximate as different phones have different screen sizes, but it gives you a general sense of where the key element should be. So you could import this image into Sketch, for example, and use it as a background layer. We also have a PSD in here if you want to edit your image in Photoshop. I recommend not adding your logo into the actual background image graphic. This login form will shift its position around on different size devices. That's why we have a separate logo option. So this graphic should really just be a gradient or a pattern or something like that. So let's go ahead and upload our background image. I've got a nice image here that I'll be using. 
and I could crop it, I'll just click finish. And there we go. So looking here, I think this looks really nice. So I'll save that. And I also wanna show you how to change this text that says sign into Buddy Boss. I can click on translations and I'll search for sign in. So you can see this text sign in, I've already translated to sign into Buddy Boss, which is why it shows like that. The default text will be sign in. So you could just come here and translate it to whatever you want. Okay, let's come back here and we'll change the launch screen. As I showed you before, this launch screen only shows for a few seconds. So you want to keep your design minimalistic. Just like the login background, any key elements need to be kept within the safety zone. We're referencing the same file here. You don't want too much text or details that members won't have time to read. Just use simple things like a logo. All right, so I've got a nice background image ready to upload. This one here. It has a similar pattern to the login screen background, but just with a Buddy Boss logo added into it. I'll click finish. Okay, so that looks good. We can also adjust the spinner. You can see that I can turn it off and I can turn it on. It's often a good idea to show it so that your members know the app is loading. Let's change the color to go with our new background. I'll use this color. And if I click on Android in our device preview, we can see that Android phones will display a different style of spinner, but the same options apply. Now let's go ahead and change the app icons. App icons display on your device's home screen, and for iOS devices will also be used for the App Store and for notifications. For Android, you will upload a separate icon for the Google Play Store while publishing. We'll cover this during our publishing video. All right, so let's start with iOS and we'll upload our iOS app icon. This icon for iOS cannot contain any transparency. It needs to be completely opaque. And we can see here in our device preview that it looks nice. Now let's go ahead and upload our Android icon. I'm gonna use the exact same icon. And let's scroll up here and look at our Android preview. You'll notice it's looking kind of odd. In modern versions of Android, this app icon will display with a white margin around it, which may not look nice depending on your icon style. In versions of Android from 2017 and newer, the icon will actually look like this in a device. That's why we'll want to use something called adaptive icons for more modern versions of Android, which I'll explain next. One thing to note is that this icon can use transparency, but still we'll want to set up adaptive icons for the best experience. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up an Android adaptive icon. So we can see that this icon looks nicer. And when I scroll down here, you can see that it's actually using two layers and they're set one on top of the other one and then masked by a shape to make this icon. It's like this because in modern versions of Android, they actually allow users to customize which shape icon they want to use on their home screen. And the icons can also have these kind of animated parallax effects. I'm going to give you some examples of the kinds of icon shapes you might expect people to use. So in Android, you can set your icons to be in circles if you want to or you can set them to be in rounded squares or in flat squares or what Android calls a squircle, which is like a half circle, half square, or even in this teardrop shape. And you can't control this. Your customers are going to set this up on their own phone. And so you want your icon to adapt to that. I can come back here and try to explain it a little more. If I look at this Android guideline, we can see here how they're explaining it, that you have a background image and then a foreground image is added on top of that with some margin around it. And if I come here, you can see the background image and the foreground image, and then there's a mask to produce the shape of the icon. And then here they're showing the parallax effects that you'll see on some Android devices, not on all. If I come here to this website, you could paste in the same URL. This lets us kind of play with the concept. So let me upload a background image and I'll also upload a foreground image. And we can see that the images get layered on top of each other and also can have this kind of moving parallax effect. And if I come here, we can apply different masks, which represents the different shapes users might be using on their Android device. So we have like this, or this, or this. So hopefully this helps to illustrate the concept. If I come back here, We've actually created an example guideline for this icon as well. So if I click here, you can see this is the background layer. 
and this is the safety zone for the foreground layer. So you'd want one image that's this full size that would be set as your background icon. And then you want one image that's the same size but has the content that matters within this safety zone, ideally with some space within there too. And then on the device, Android is actually going to crop it right around this big. So all of this extra content back here is not even going to be seen. It's just kind of there in the background so it can be pulled in during a parallax effect, which again is only visible on some Android devices. So let's come back here and upload our own. I'll use the same images we were playing with. And let's see what it looks like. So in our app preview, we can see that the Android icon is displaying in the correct size with no margin anymore. And from this example, you can see the kind of strategy that we're going with. You should use your logo as the foreground icon with some transparency, and then pick a color or pattern for your background icon. It can have some small design elements as long as you're comfortable with them moving around a little bit in the corner. And finally, let's add our notification icon for Android. We can see up here an example of what the notification looks like in Android. It will display the name of our site plus this icon. iOS actually just uses the app icon in notifications, this icon here, but Android requires that you upload a separate icon. The icon should be square and can have transparency. I'm going to pick actually a really similar icon And let's check it out. Yeah, it looks good. So there we go. We've now updated all of our images and icons. And next, I'm going to go generate a new build so we can preview the changes in the actual app. Again, as a reminder, a lot of these sections require a new build so that these images can be stored within the app. Once that build is done, we'll jump back into iOS and Android, and I'll show you what the images look like. We're back to my iPhone, and you can see I'm downloading the new build of my app. It's downloaded. You can see this build has our new app icon. And you might also notice this dev label at the top. That label was automatically added because this app is set up as a dev app. Let's go ahead and open the app up. Pay close attention. You'll notice our new launch screen background has been added and you'll also see the new orange spinner. On the login screen, you can see we're now displaying our new logo and our new background image. Let's log in. And if I scroll up, we can see that we have our new home screen logo. And everything's looking really great here. Now let's pause for a moment and go see how our app looks on an Android device. Here I am on my Google Pixel running Android, and you can see I've actually created two different Android builds. This first one is for the app we've been using throughout the video, and you can see the adaptive icon is looking great. And then I also created a second build from another app where I've uploaded only the normal app icon without the adaptive icon layers. I did this just so you can see how it looks. As you can see, the adaptive icon looks much nicer. Let me show you how it looks in some other icon shapes. Let's long tap on the home screen and I'll tap on styles and wallpapers and style. And let's switch the icon shape to a teardrop and I'll click on apply. And you can see our adaptive icon has in fact adapted to this new shape. Let's also try a circle icon. And this icon looks great also. As you can see, we've spent a lot of time making sure that Buddy Boss app can be easily customized and will look great on all devices. Custom images and icons are just one way you can personalize the look and feel of your app. Make sure to check out our other videos where we'll show you how to change your colors and typography. We can't wait to see what you come up with when designing your own Buddy Boss app.